in the last lecture we have discussed reflexive spaces reflexive spaces are precisely those non linear spaces for which the natural embedding from that non linear space to its second dual space is an isometric isomorphism or we can say that it is an on to nap today i will continue the topic now the first theorem states that every finite dimensional non linear space is reflexive let us prove this theorem let x be an n dimensional non linear space over field k where field k is the field of real numbers or the field of complex numbers then we find that dimension of x is equal to dimension of x star is equal to dimension of x double star and this is equal to n here we know that since x star is the um, vector space of all bounded linear functionals from x to k and since dimension of x is equal to n and dimension of 1 k is equal to 1 so dimension of x star is equal to n and similarly x double star is the vector space of all bounded linear functionals from x star to k and since x star uh, is of dimension n and k is of dimension 1 so dimension of x double star is equal to n as the embedding natural embedding pi from x to x double star is 1 1 and as x is n dimensional so its image that is pi of x is n dimensional subspace of x double star since dimension of x double star is n and pi of x is a subspace of x double star and it is also of dimension n so pi of x must be equal to x double star and so we have shown that pi is on to that means x is reflexive and from this theorem we can uh, have some examples r to the power n and c to the power n as reflexive spaces for different values of natural number n now the next theorem states that a non linear space is isometrically isomorphic to a dense subspace of a banach space let us prove this theorem let x be a non linear space and we know that the mapping Uh, that is a natural embedding pi from x to x double star defined by pi of x is equal to phi x is an embedding and so x is isometrically isomorphic to um, pi image of x that is pi of x x is isometrically isomorphic to pi of x but pi of x is a dense subspace of closure of pi of x why because if we take closure of pi of x then pi, um, closure of pi of x is equal to um, closure of pi of x on, and so we can say that pi of x is a dense subspace of closure of pi of x and um, closure of pi of x is a closed subspace of banach space x double star and we know that any closed subspace of a banach space is always complete and so closure of pi of x is itself a banach space hence x is isometrically isomorphic to dense subspace pi of x of banach space closure of pi of x now the next theorem states that let x be a separable non linear space if x star is non separable then x is non reflexive let us prove this theorem we have to show that x is non reflexive to its contrary we assume that x is reflexive that means x is isometrically isomorphic to x double star that is x is isometrically isomorphic to its second dual space and so x is homeomorphic to x double star and we also know that homeomorphic image 
of a separable space is separable and here it is given that x is separable so its homeomorphic image that is x star x double star is also separable earlier we have proved that if x star is separable then this implies that x is separable so here um, as x double star is separable so this implies that x star is separable which is a contradiction as it is given that x star is non separable so we arrive at a contradiction so our assumption is wrong hence x must be non reflexive now the next theorem states that let xn be a sequence in a norm linear space x if supremum of the set consists of f of xn um, for all n belongs to n is less than infinity means supremum of mod of f of xn is finite it is a finite number for every f in x star then supremum of the set consists of norm of xn where n belongs to n is less than infinity means supremum of norm of xn is a finite number let us prove this theorem consider the natural embedding pi from x to x double star defined by pi of x is equal to phi x and now mod of phi xn of f by definition of phi function here this is equal to mod of f of xn and uh, this is uh, less than or equal to supremum of the set consists of mod of f of xn and uh, supremum is taken over all n belongs to n and um, this is given as this is uh, less than infinity and so we can say that mod of phi of xn of f is less than infinity for every f in x star and this is true for all n belongs to n and so we can say that the sequence phi um, xn of f is bounded for each f belongs to x star as the set phi xn where n belongs to n is a collection of bounded linear functionals on a banach space x star and so by uniform boundedness principle the set consists of phi xn where n belongs to n is a bounded subset of x double star that is the sequence norm phi xn is bounded and we know that um, uh, pi xn is nothing but pi of xn and so the sequence norm pi xn is bounded and in the last lecture we have proved that pi is an isometry and so pi of norm of pi of xn is equal to norm of xn and so this implies that the sequence norm xn is bounded and that means uh, as this is a um, sequence of real numbers it is bounded so its supremum exists means supremum is a finite number that means supremum of the set consists of norm xn where n belongs to n is less than infinity thank you